Hello and thanks for joining us for this edition of Tech 24 coming up. Who's that at the door? New technology allows users to recognize faces without even being on site. It's a new generation surveillance camera with a friendly name. And later we'll be testing rocket skates, roller skates with electric motorized wheel. Will they be invading your sidewalk? We'll find out with Dana J. Cavalcar. But first, Apple is hoping to launch another music revolution. After changing the way we buy music online with iTunes, the Cupertino tech giant wants to elbow its way into a crowded streaming market with Apple Music. For a 10 US dollar monthly fee or 9 euros and 99 cents in the EU, users will get access to 30 million tracks both on and offline. Mark Thompson explains. This is Zane Lowell Beats One. A new frontier for one of the world's biggest tech companies. After years of watching Spotify dominate the music streaming market, Apple has decided to compete. It's an every living thing. I know you are going to love it. It will change the way that you experience music forever. The new app combines streaming alongside a free 24-hour internet radio station, curated playlists, and a new service for artists to share unreleased tracks and other material. Bottom, Canadian rapper Drake was on board for the launch. This is something that, that simplifies everything for the modern, modern musician like myself and the modern music consumer like you. Apple Music was built by the team behind the Beats Music Service, a company it bought for $3 billion a year ago. The app will launch in 100 countries later this month. Tech critics say it does pose a realistic threat to industry leader Spotify. As a music fan, one of my biggest gripes sometimes is finding and discovering new music. So I'm really hoping Apple Music this gives me an opportunity to sort of discover new artists and, and keep that playlist constantly changing, keeping it exciting. Wow. Other services provided by the likes of Tidal, Google and Deezer have so far struggled to chip away at Spotify's 15 million paying subscribers. Apple says it's hoping to reach that figure in under a year. Let's take a closer look now with Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Welcome, Dan. Um, the first question that comes to my mind is, can Apple really steal the spotlight from Spotify? Well, Shona, I don't think so. I mean, the Apple Music will certainly pose a strong challenge to the industry leader Spotify. But will it be able to dislodge uh, Spotify from its pole position? I think it's, uh, it's not possible, at least in the near future. That's because Spotify has a mixture of services. Unlike Apple, which offers the paid service, which you mentioned, 10 euros per month in the EU, EU Spotify has a free option as well. So users can use the free option. Of course, it's... Uh, but the, the quality is lower. I know, but then even if and you... And you also have ads. That's true, but that ad support, but you don't have to pay money. I mean, that's the mentality of your users. You know, if there's a free option, I will opt for a free option. I use Spotify for free. And there, a substantial majority of, or substantial number of people who use Spotify, they opt for free, uh, for the free option. So yeah, that's a big, big uh, pulling, up, or you can say a draw for users to Spotify. And Apple has just started, so we should give it some time to see whether it catches up and ultimately dislodges Spotify or not. But it's not a surprise that Apple entered this fray, you know, as the report mentioned, it was the king of music. It changed the way uh, we looked at music with the launch of the iPod and subsequently how we download songs uh, via iTunes. So it's not surprising that it's entered the fray and it wants to get into this action of streaming, which is the future. Because according to a recent survey, uh, it, it, it has been suggested that uh, the number of downloads via iTunes or other services will go down while streaming will become more and more popular. Let's move on now to our next topic, Dan and Jay, facial recognition technology. This sounds like the stuff of science fiction, but it actually exists in real life already. Dan and Jay, where are we seeing uh, facial recognition technology in our everyday lives? There are a couple of applications which are very obvious, like security and customer service, for example. You know, researchers in China have uh, developed a system of facial recognition using which you can make online payments without having to actually put in credit card details. Because first, of course, in order to log in, you have to put the credit card details. And once it's done, 
it just the face has to match and the payment is done. So that's one interesting example. The other interesting example is in the US where researchers are now using this uh, technique to count fish. You know, they don't count it individually, but uh, using special cameras, they get the density of fish in a particular area of the sea, and then they make up the population. The fish I imagine population. they're not uh, recognizing each individual fish's face. No, but you'll be surprised. There's an app called Finding Roar in the US, which does uh, individually look for pets. So, for example, if you have lost a dog, uh, using this app, you can identify, if you find a stray dog and you say that, oh, maybe this could be the dog, you can, you know, take a picture and send it through the network, through the app. So to the neighborhood the and see if anybody's exactly. found and your dog. That's, that's how you can locate a dog, yeah. All right, well, here in France, a company, a company called Netatmo has introduced a new system. Um, tell us more about it. There it is. It's called Welcome. Yeah, it's a new camera by Netatmo, as you mentioned. Uh, it has infrared vision, so besides, uh, you know, detecting faces in, in light, it can also detect faces in the dark. It has a night vision. Uh, uh, the other interesting part about this camera is uh, it, you can connect it, I mean, it, you can access it through app from any part of the world. It is easy to, you know, look at faces. You can also have live uh, feedback, like who is entering, who is already uh, present in your house, for example. So how does it work technically, from a technical yeah, perspective? Yeah, so what you do is, it uh, for, first of all, you feed the information saying that these are the people who I already know. So it gives you an alert that some known person enters your house. It will tell you, oh, XYZ has entered. But it also gives alerts to about strangers who are about to enter the house or who have entered the house, which is very useful from a security point of view. And you don't have to be actually physically present in the house to, say, monitor your kids. So you, so you receive the, the feed on your app, exactly, on your phone. Exactly, on an app, yeah. Okay, and what are the pros and cons of this system? Well, the obvious benefits are ease, as I mentioned, uh, you know, for example, online payments have become easier, could become easier, for example. Second is security. You can easily keep a track of your house or other property using these cameras. And at the same time, you know, or crime detection, for example, you know. Of course, police, yeah. Uh, and you crime can have detection the... and crime prevention, you can have a database and you can match, you know. Right. The faces or the, it's in the list of... Yeah, but at the same time, that's a slippery slope right there. Exactly. I mean, There's do other we side. want some kind the of huge database is, with yeah, everybody's to, face in there? That's what we are concerned about these days, surveillance, for example. Right, that privacy, could, things exactly. like that. And the other is hacking. You know, if you are de entirely dependent on the system for the security of your house and somehow you are, you know, the system gets hacked, then, you know, something, you know, sinister could happen. So. There's, right. there's a very thin line, like you have to really maintain, you have to make it, make sure that it's really strongly encrypted. But the good thing about this uh, camera is that it doesn't uh, offer or it doesn't provide all the information on the cloud. So it's, there's a oh, slot very... here for, you know, a card so you can take it out and keep it for yourself. Yeah. Okay, you can have it, but it's yeah. not in sort of generally exactly. shared yeah. in the cloud. All right. Thanks, Dan and Jay, for that. Now it's time for our weekly test. They're called rocket skates, and they're part of a growing pool of electric accessories for getting around, mostly in cities. Now, Dan and Jay, you and I both tested them. Uh, before you give me your opinion, tell us how they work. Well, each skate is powered by two hub motors. One motor is connected to each wheel, as you can see here. So this wheel rotates because of the motor. And there's a wheel at the back which uh, allows or it enables the balance of the skate. So if you're too, you know, leaning forward or you're leaning back, this wheel controls your movement as well and adds stability to the skates. Uh, there's an onboard microprocessor which controls these motors. And it's an intelligent system. So, for example, if uh, the, the lead skate, uh, you know, it, the wheels on the lead skate start spinning at a particular, uh, you know, at a particular um, rotation speed. speed yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the other skate, it, it manages to know that, uh, you know, this is the speed. Which so it lead. matches it up matches with it. it. Yeah. So there's, okay. a, there's a communication between these two skates. Uh, what you do basically is you strap on uh, with your the leading foot on this. It's something like snow boots. It does, you know, with the... Yeah, they're kind of heavy, right? Yeah, they're quite heavy. And the three, reason why they're heavy is because of that right? motor. Each? Yeah, mm -hmm. e e each skate weighs around three kg. It's very difficult to lift them and carry. But yeah, so you basically you strap uh, here. So uh, they're rocket like skates, snowboard. but they're not going to rocket, they're not going to propel you in the air. But they they're propel gonna... you on the ground. They have on quite the impressive speeds, like 28 kilometers per hour for skates is not oh, wow. bad. Uh, they are powered by a lithium-ion battery pack. Uh -huh. uh, the autonomy is around 16 kilometers, and uh, after 16 kilometers, you take... That's, around, a, that's a good number of hours. It's not bad, yeah, and for two and, you have to charge for two and a half hours to get the full battery uh -huh. recharge. So, yeah, that's, that's how it works. All right, so what did you think? Well, in general, Shona, I'm not very good at maintaining balance. I mean, even earlier, you know, we had this monowheel. 
and I found it so difficult to use it. Yeah. It was a similar case with these skates as well. I kept, I mean, I didn't. They look like they'd be really simple. I know, but, but you not. tried it. Tell us your opinion. Well, I also tried them. It's it's quite tricky to maintain your balance. I don't know if it's like a, a, a then you need to get a, you need to get the hang of it. But I think one good thing um, is that because half of your foot is out, at least you know you can control it. You know, even if you you're not able to do it well, but at least you're not going yeah. to have a heavy fall. Unlike the, but the thing is, it's really a question of, of balance. Yeah, really. that's true. Yeah, isn't it the same question for everything? I guess balance. Well, yeah, but I mean, th these have a similar uh, s similar idea, segways, right? Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. I, I have tried segways before, and there is no issue of balance on No, because you can hold on to something, you know, it's easier. Yeah. You don't, here you are, you need I guess there's just this one platform, right. and here there's, each foot is on a different platform. Right. And they have to be at a particular angle, like the leading foot and the foot following, you know, the trailing right. foot, so. But then, when you see somebody who knows how to do it, you know, it looks really easy. So That's maybe true. with, with... It's the same, the same with everything. When you see an expert doing something, oh, it looks so easy. Right, it yeah. looks so easy, yeah. and then you try it, and you're like, okay. Well, that's the end of our show, but you can find us on Facebook or Twitter. Our hashtag is Tech24. We, we leave you with these images of the entire Tech24 team trying out these rocket skates, and please don't laugh. You would have had a rough time, too. See you next time. <laughs>